Hey, Scruffy. How you doing? You yeah, okay? Okay. I got some meows. They're a little quieter than uh, some other nights. That was a little louder. Okay, so I have your meaty pate with real chicken and tuna. It's the end of the can, so I'll get something new tomorrow. It's chilly. <clears throat> so I saw Scruffy a few times today. So I know it's kind of cold today. Okay, I got the glove on. So I hope you don't scratch me tonight. Like last night. So the temperature cooled down again overnight. I think we got close to freezing. It was really cold in the middle of the night, and I noticed there was frost on the deck this morning, very early this morning, and then it seemed like water was dripping through the overhang that I'm under right now. And usually, yeah, it's protect it from the rain so this this section's dry but I've seen water drops in this section and I'm wondering if it was maybe the water had frozen and then was able to maybe slowly accumulate and kind of drip through some of the cracks which rain maybe has a harder time getting through I, I don't know it doesn't make a lot of sense Really moved into that chin rub there and that headbutt there. Another chin rub. I think I heard a purr. Yeah. Like that. So, yeah, I'm careful about that side. It's usually when he strikes, but he keeps turning that way. So it seems like he wants me to cut this side. But this is where I get scared because this is also where he tends to get mad and strike me. So I don't know if he's having flea problems, maybe somewhere on this side. So his fur doesn't look too bad today. So I think that flea pill from the other day really helped. And I'm hoping, yeah, with this uh, change in weather, the fleas are going to have a hard, harder time uh, breeding. So he picked up his foot there and touched the glove. I don't think it was an attack. See, he wants me on that side, but this is the side that he strikes on. And there's a purr.
see Reb's outside again. Another purr. It seems to really like it. And there's neck there. Okay, I'm on that side again. The purr. So yeah, I think Scruffy's a little nicer tonight. So now I'm gonna regret saying that because he's probably gonna scratch me in a few minutes. So I think yeah, we actually got kind of late into the pets yesterday, and then he scratched. Twice. <clears throat> so I still haven't heard anything from the paperwork, uh, stuff I'm working on. <clears throat> so yeah, I didn't get any callbacks from anybody, or messages, or emails. Oh wow. He's using his foot to try to guide my hand, I think. See, yeah. Like that, huh? What's new? Yeah, he hasn't done that before. Oh wow, a meow. <clears throat> yeah, he's picked up his foot before, but yeah, he actually, uh, you know, kind of grabbed on this time, and it wasn't like an attack. Yeah. So yeah, I was a little worried there that he's going to strike. <laughs> So far, so good, and we're almost at food time. So I think uh, I might get away without a scratch tonight. <laughs> I think I might want to give him his food a little early, just so I don't tempt fate. Because I keep saying, saying it and probably asking for trouble, jinxing it. Yeah, another meow. Oh wow, he lunged up there. Trying to get under the glove. Saw both feet go up, but not an attack. So, yeah, I don't know where ha Scruffy was hanging out in the middle of the night or early this morning because it was so cold. I'm kind of curious where he goes. I see some blue, or I saw some blue uh, specks on him, so it means he may have been sleeping on the moving blanket, which means he may have been in that box on the table, just not when I, just not at the time when I was looking. Yeah. Getting ready for food? Or you like this uh, neck rub? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you like this. Mm, yeah, that's uh. Oh wow, you're grabbing the glove. And it's. I can feel his claw, but yeah, I don't think that's an attack, so. I don't think he's trying to hurt me there. Okay, yeah, you've been really good tonight. I might have to give you your food now. Finish this side up and get your food. I'm going to temp feet and we'll keep going. I think I should give you your food now. Do your food, okay? Okay, here comes your food.
Oops. So yeah, his fur visually looks pretty good tonight. It's kind of fluffy. Don't know if that helps with the cold or not. But. <clears throat> but yeah, this temperature, it's you know good. Good to have the thicker uh, coat. First, see yeah, how we get the hotter summers here. So that coat's probably terrible for that. And yeah, it doesn't get that cold here. So I think I've read Maine, Maine Coons can actually uh, handle uh, really cold temperatures because of their really thick fur. So they're really well suited to the very cold climates. Um, I don't know how a shorter hair cap fares in comparison. And then, yeah, so Scruffy's probably closer to that kind of fur in the main coon than a shorter haired cat. So I'm guessing we probably can handle some good cold temperatures. But yeah, we don't get anything that cold here. So this is getting close to about as cold as we get. So. We occasionally get below freezing, but not often. So anyway, let's see, I saw Scruffy, I think, yeah, early, no, sorry, early this morning I didn't see him. Late this morning, I did see him sunbathing um, out in the deck. And, uh... It's kind of weird, so he was partly exposed in the sun, and then part of the umbrella or around, uh, part of the table or something was casting a shadow on him. So he was like half in the sun and half in the shade. Kind of figured it was you know cold enough you'd be want, want to be in the whole sun. Then I think... It was a little late to bring out his water today, but yeah. Around that time, um, I think yeah, he was sleeping on the table, and yeah, he was behind the sun oven this time, so he wasn't on the thermal blanket again. And uh, then I decided to uh, finally come out, bring out his water. I didn't really want to disturb him while he was sleeping. So there's a lot of pate left. Having trouble chewing. Made a mess. There's a little piece of pate on the deck now. So, anyway, I decided to come out, but yeah, I didn't really want to disturb him. He, uh, but yeah, so I basically decided to kind of slowly come out try to put down the bowl gently and then kind of back away and not compel him to feel that he needed to flee off the table or something like that. And he'd go back to sleep or whatever. So, um, so he was watching me. And then I went back in. And then it looked like he started moving to get ready to get off the table. So he took his time, so I think maybe he was thinking it over. But yeah, eventually he decided to jump off the table and then drink some water. And so I filmed him for probably a couple minutes drinking the water. And then uh, I think he backed away a little bit and started grooming himself. And then, yeah, that was kind of the end of uh, my reporting. I decided, to, yeah, I, I, yeah, I wanted to go for a walk. So it looks like the weather in a few more days 
rain rain's gonna come back. So I need to take advantage of the dry sun when I uh, saw the chance. Go for a walk. I did bring uh, my camera and kibble just in case I encountered the friendly cat again, which I still need to show video of. Um, but yeah, I think I have enough video of Scruffy tonight that I'll save that one for another time, maybe tomorrow. So. I figure, you know, just my experience with uh, Scruffy here, that we have days where I don't even see him at lunch, so th that would be a good time to run the other footage. But yeah, so anyway, I brought Kibble with me and uh, didn't encounter any cats today, so. That footage. Um, yeah, I guess. Not that many people were out today, but yeah, I guess it's because it's kind of cold. So, I guess since I got to go, uh, so I left a little earlier today, so a little bit more time for my walk, so I tried to do. So I usually do a minimum two laps, and if I have a little more time, I try to end, and if I'm feeling okay, with regards to my hip or leg or whatever the problem is. Um, I'll start doing a third lap, though. I only do like a, there's like a, there's a section where you can start a loop, and then there's like a shortcut back, so that way I don't have to go through the whole giant, uh, route because um, it's like a is it one one and two-thirds miles for a lap <clears throat> so I can cut it a little short so it's uh, or actually a lot short um, so I think it's like one-third maybe of the route if I take it this uh, shortcut back so I've been doing that uh, probably the past few times. Uh, today I tried to actually go a little further. Um, the shortcuts are a little harder to come by, for, uh, one that uh, deep into the route though. Uh, but there are a couple different out alternate routes. So this one might have been like equivalent to half half the route. So we uh, two and a half laps in total. I did my crossover stretching exercise before I left just to kind of gauge where my uh, leg hip uh, problem is. And I'm, I'm noticing, yeah, there is a slight improvement. So I'm able to cross over a little more with a little less pain. So I am making progress. Albeit very slowly, I think it's probably been two months now. I think since I stopped biking and running, so I try to let this leg heal. So I'm really actually kind of frustrated it's taking this long. I was, I was hoping it would be two weeks because I didn't think my uh, problem was that serious, but you know, it's taken a very long time to heal. So, I'd like to say I think it'll be healed in a week, but I think uh, based on the fact that it's already taken two months, I probably shouldn't rule out another month of this. So, I'd be grateful to see if it was uh, two weeks instead of a month, but way things are going, it could be two months for all I know, or more. Yeah, Scruffy's made a big mess. There's like two chunks of pate on the deck that uh, there's like some on the side of the or the edge of the bowl too. I don't know how you did that.
so looks like he's almost done. So I cooked a baked macaroni and cheese dish last night. And yeah, not good for my diet, but I haven't had a cheat meal in a while. I haven't had yeah macaroni and cheese in a really long time, so starting to crave starting to crave something with cheese and <laughs> said, well, macaroni and cheese. It's about as cheesy as you can get. Uh, yeah, I like the recipe from Alton Brown. He actually has two that he has up. So he has the oven style. Yeah, just moving my foot there. That pot script his attention. And then I guess after protest, um, a, he. Uh, also ta uh, taught a stovetop version of a macaroni and cheese. They're actually both pretty good. But yeah, I went with the baked one this time. Let me move the ball. So, yeah, the problem with the baked one is it's actually way too much food. I should have. So, I, yeah, I don't think about, yeah, I didn't think about scaling the recipe. So I got, like, tons of leftovers, and I'm, like, thinking, gee, maybe I really shouldn't eat all that <laughs> myself. Even, even over multiple days, it's probably too much. But... Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to try today, uh, this time was, uh, so I still have some sure talking noodles, and um, I've read people were using the sure talking noodles in mac, mac and cheese, and I you know, thought about it, so eh, why not? So yeah, so I tried uh, mixing in some sure talking noodles with it, and yeah, it's actually it actually kind of works. Sneezes. It's a pretty bad case of the sneezes <laughs> right after eating. So I wonder if it's the food or Coincidence. I think that actually happened to me last night or the night before. I was eating, it's probably the night before, I was eating my soup. <laughs> and the uh, news started running. Not sure why. I wondering if it was all the spices I added, but I always add the spices, so I don't know. Okay, yeah, sorry Scruffy, that's all I got for tonight. So I think I'm gonna go in. It doesn't look like you want to be a pet. It looks like you want more food, but yeah, you ate everything. Okay, so I'm gonna get up. Okay folks, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.